Welcome to the Whittier Warriors Ask Coach video series. This is the second in the series. Um, I get a lot of questions about warming up for races, uh, especially from parents, I think, uh, but kids as well, in terms of why it's important, why we do so much, things of that nature. So we'll get into those questions. Again, this is some short answers to questions. Uh, should be about five minutes. Question I typically get is, Coach, why do what do our kids have to warm up two miles to run a one mile race? Uh, in other words, why do they have to warm up so much and don't they get tired in doing so and then don't perform as well during the races? Um, to the opposite of that, I see a lot of teams out there that I honestly don't see the kids warming up, or I see them go do a light jog for about three or four minutes. They come back, they put on their spikes, and they get, get out there on the track and try to run a race. Um, reality is that for the body, uh, for an athlete's body to be ready to perform really in any sport, not just in running. It requires a significant amount of preparation, uh, not just in the training in the days and weeks and months before, uh, but that day right before the race. Uh, and a few things here. So uh, first of all, you know, we always like to say the answer is because I said so, but of course we're obviously joking about that. Um, there's science behind everything that we do. There's always intent to what we do. Um, Goals of warming up is something that we have to look at, right? So at the end of the day, why do we warm up? Not just because or because everybody does it. Um, the goal of a warm up should be to raise the heart rate to about 80 to 85 uh, of max. We should raise the VO2 max capabilities of the body to about 65 to 70% of max. Uh, we're not trying to max out, right? So, so if we did you know, go out there and let's say run a race before a race, uh, and max out you know, an athlete's ability. Yes, absolutely, that's gonna hurt them during the race. But at the same time, if you go for a very, very, very light jog, it really doesn't get the heart rate up. It doesn't get you know, the body you know, consuming oxygen the way it should. Uh, and it will do so eventually during the race, but by the end the race might be over. Uh, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, we need to activate muscles for performance, right? So a muscle that's cold, a muscle that's not you know, flexible, stretched out, um, and even beyond the muscle itself, the nervous system isn't ready to fire. It will take some time for it to get up to speed. And during that time, that's when young people struggle, fall behind, or have to exert themselves way too much to keep up with the competition. Um, so how long does it take to warm up, right? About 15, 15 to 20 minutes of steady running. So that varies right, greatly from athlete to athlete. Obviously, somebody that runs a very casual uh, run in you know, six, seven minute paces, they can actually get three miles in a warm up. Not necessarily saying we would go that far out, but we would probably do two, two and a half with those athletes, along with drills and other things that take you know, up that time as well. Um, athletes that are a little bit slower, maybe just you know, their casual running is around 10 minute paces, you know, they'll get a mile and a half in plus drills and so on. Uh, it's just going to depend on ability and age and so on. But we do want them out there for a good 15 to 20 minutes of steady um, running and movement. Um, we want to get heart, higher heart rates out than you would in a, in, a, in a kind of a light jog situation. So in between those or at the end of that running, we'll have them do strides to really get that heart rate up, right? That's when we're going to see heart rates go up into the 80, 85%, which is what we want to see them, right? Again, they're not full out sprinting. They're not exhausting themselves, um, but they're feeling like race pace type of feeling for that race, whether it's the mile or the two mile, the 5K, whatever it may be. Um, and again, muscles will be activated, nervous system will start firing. Um, we'll do some drills to do it as well. We're not gonna get a lot of details of the actual warm up, um, but just know that this is the reasons why all these things are important. Um, and we'll get into the whole thing of why that key is can't be shorter. Right? A lot of parents are concerned, hey, if you tire my kid out, they're not gonna race good. Well, the reality is that it takes time for the body to reach that 85, you know, 80 to 85% heart rate, or especially the VO2 max capabilities. Um, your body, when you're cold and you haven't warmed up yet, it's not able to consume oxygen in a good way. So let's just say you're hovering around 50, 45% of that capability. If they start a race like that, sure, their adrenaline is going to have them keep up, but they're, they're going to have to struggle a lot more to take in oxygen and really we'll go in a little bit. We'll cover that in a little bit, but uh, all these things take time to build up. So that's why we need the longer warm up routine so their bodies are at that level and don't have to use the first part of the race as part of the with that, the catch question I get a lot from athletes themselves is, coach, I'm fine the first mile, but at the end, I just can't keep up. Is that because I'm tired from too much warm up, right? And, and that's a, it makes sense, right? It's a common correlation, right? 
you know, I wasn't tired at the beginning, but I'm tired at the end because I did too much at the warm up. That's really not the case. What's actually happening there in cases where we don't warm up enough is really the opposite. So basically systems, you know, meaning VO2 max and heart rate and all these things that we utilize throughout the race takes time to get up to speed, to get up to, you know, peak performance. So if an athlete doesn't warm up well, they'll start the race and their adrenaline will push them to keep up with the competition. Uh, they may struggle a little bit, but they will, right? And um, what happens is though, in order to keep up with them because their systems are not firing, at, you know, it's kind of like running three pistons on a, a four cylinder car. Um, they're having to work that much harder. So they're going anaerobic just to keep up with the competition when they shouldn't have to, right? They should be at 95% or something for that beginning part of the race. Um, so, so at the example here we like to use is VO2 max, right? Because it's lower because they haven't warmed up properly or they haven't warmed up enough. They're having to go anaerobic during those first miles. And in the later miles, their, their body's exhausted. It's not burning carbs anymore. It's burning fat. It's uh, not burning efficient energy by any means. They'll begin to slow and they'll get past. Uh, and it's not because they're exhausted. It's because their, their systems, uh, the incorrect systems were used at the beginning of the race because of the improper warmups. Um, and again, it's all about the training, right? If we've trained an athlete correctly and they've run four, five, six, you know, 10 miles during practice, a two mile warm up is not going to impact a one mile race or even a three mile race, right? They're more than capable of running that distance. It's a matter of doing the right things at the right time for their warm ups, making sure they're ready for the race. Um, so you may see us you know, do a little bit more than other teams, but there's a reason behind that we want to make sure they're at peak when the race starts. And we know the endurance will be there to last that peak level of performance throughout the entire race. All right, parents and athletes, I hope that helps. Thank you very much. Join us the next Ask Coach and have a good day.